Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and that's Shy, or was that reverse? I've already forgotten. Uh, but, no, I we think you had it that time. You know, oh, good. seems like a little trick to do would be to, to watch our cameras, and just slowly start pointing at it, and anticipate who <laughs> Start making arm motions just towards themselves first. Do the radar method of like one of these is the uh, oh the over here okay. <laughs> so we are back with another made from abyss episode, and we're going to uh, definitely have fun with all the horror today. But to start off the horror, we have the most horrible thing of all: some comments. Yeah, yeah some really wordy comments. Y'all, y'all really be chatting up a storm in these comments. Really, really just, really just chatting up like this. Jason Brennan guy, Jason Brennan, has given me a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen bullet points in a comment to address. And we we're have doing a whole it. episode here. <laughs> we we have the entirety of this show condensed into one bullet point caught no all right so the first bullet point says they did not show irumui's Ir irumui's banishment but bailoff read her tattoos which state that her inability to bear children marks her as a sacrifice to the abyss some people think faputa resembles a moth but nanachi is probably more animalistic in general riko's inner monologue in the manga does seem to imply she was going to choose organs as adapting to the loss of her legs or eyes Grammatically, the sentence is confusing. Choose organs as adapting to the loss of her legs or eyes would slow them down, even if Reg carried her and she only needs long enough to reach the bottom. I have no idea what you're communicating. That's grammatically I think what they're confusing. saying here is that Riku is like, uh, I'm just going to sprint to the end and hope I don't die first. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I, I had no idea what he was saying there, sorry. Um, according to Wiktionary, Ractus is Lithuanian for key. Oh, there uh, you go. I or, that. Yeah. Congratulations. We that, have more theta lore here. Yeah. I didn't know that when I made up the word Ractus, but it turns out I didn't make it up. Hey, you spell it with a U, though. Uh, not, there, it's a typo on their end. Oh, R -A -K, shit. Okay, never mind then. R A K T U S is uh, Lithuanian for keys. Rack 2 is Lithuanian for key. Ah. Oh. Did, well, did not know that when I made the character name. It was actually, I wanted a cool Star Wars name for an NPC. <laughs> I understand I that. Making. Totally understand that. Uh, moving on to the next bullet point here. The villagers rely on the balancing to take out their prey during the loring. Unfortunately, reciprocal damage effects aren't very effective against swarms. Uh, Wazukian, Belof, and Voiko were the sages of Gondra due to Voiko's imprisonment, however... Judo Imo took her place on the roster as one of the sages of Irobudu. Yeah, our boy, the kaiju. Yeah, I'm really, like, going with this pronunciation here. I'm at least making it sound clean. You're oh. on point today. Keep it up. I mean, thankfully, <laughs> you're also with two other people who would not know if you were fucking it up. I don't know if I'm fucking it up or not. What I know is I'm making it sound fluid. You're, you're, you're doing it you're smooth. You're, you're also the one that laughs at us when we mess up, so... By virtue, you to be are fair. To be fair, words, words in general. When I hear them, I'm, I'm just, I like words, and when they're, they sound funny, I can't help but laugh. It's a reaction, whether it's wrong or just sounds funny. I can't help myself. Ah, uh, let's see. Moving on to more bullet points. Majikaja has a lot of different vessels. Unfortunately, his fast body is expensive to operate. Not sure how clear it was here, but Rico's plan involved using the undraft from the fire to carry the creature into her net trap. Yeah, no, that, that part, I think, was clearly communicated. Faputa and Irimui also share a seiyu in the form of Misaki Kuno. Before elaborating about her greed, Voiko did affirm Rico's question about whether she was a bad person, though obviously that's not quite the same as being evil. Not D&D, but the manga co is apparently really into Sword World tabletop role-playing game in his youth. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, neat. Uh, supposedly, the author had planned to have Irumui's children look human, but was talked out of it by his assistant, who also stopped him from killing off Nanachi. Thank you, assistant. Assistant is MVP here of this whole series now. Based so, and poggers. Like George Lucas's wife during Star Wars. <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, near as I can tell, the egg doesn't grant discreet wishes, but rather tries to realize the desires of its user in Irumui's case. Her arm no longer hurts, she's not infertile, she has her pet back, sort of, and Ganja is cured. And uh, everything even... they wanted. Yep, just in a really twisted way. Never trust wishes. Um, even supposing the Golden City does exist, Wazukian will find it. Quote from Bailoff Season 2 Episode 1. Also, notice that Wazukian, seemingly alone, was unaffected by the pseudo-water. Also remember him eating bugs and rats to prevent disease? Huh. I don't remember him being... I don't remember them really showing him too, too much while people were getting sick. I just remember him showing him making the soup. Well, he, he definitely was... didn't get sick like everyone else. Yeah, he was wandering around, not in the room full of bodies. Gotcha. Um, and the last point here. In addition, his decisions to take in not only Iru Mui, but also her pet hermit dweller, despite food and water being in short supply, further suggests there's something to Wazukian's prophetic abilities. There's some question as to how they work, in part because his motives are difficult to discern. Yeah. Honestly, not to mention, he's just, like, the only guy out there that has, like, a superpower. Everyone else needs, like, relics and stuff. Mm -hmm. That yeah, was a little it's weird a, to me. It's, it's a very subtle power compared to what it could possibly be. He obviously seems, like, a little bit off-center and crazy to begin with, and whether or not anything he's seen is real or not, uh, you know, who knows? He just has a vague idea of the direction he should go, and he seems just all in on doing it. I mean, we know. We know the stuff he's seen is real, because we're there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, we, yeah, now we have evidence that we have been led to his prophetic visions. They are, in fact, real. Well, no, I mean... But he doesn't seem to get have a whole lot about it. Remember, they came from a different continent on boats mm -hmm. to a place where the abyss was, because he prophesized the abyss as well. So, we've been getting like, oh, we're going to come to that giant hole in the ground. Found it. We, every step along the way, we've been proving that he's right. Yep. Uh, but even so, his power definitely seems subtle. I don't think like he would like dodge an attack coming at him with his prophetic ability or anything. In fact, he if, even if he could, he'd probably just take it because he's like, nah, I figured it was better that way. Yeah, honestly, I feel like if he saw himself getting punched in the face in a prophecy, he'd just let it happen. Be like, I'm right, like no, I saw the future. I deserve that. I don't know what uh, what manga you two are writing where prophecy and future sight are the same thing. I mean, I'm I mean, just they seem to be the same thing based on how he's, you know, using the ability. He prophesized and foresaw all these things and now is realizing them. I think a prophet sees things far into the future, whereas you guys are talking like next. I don't know, did you see the movie next? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know what you're saying. I'm just saying maybe one day he had a prophecy of himself getting punched in the face, and when that day came, he let it happen. That's all I'm saying. It's like really important to me that I get punched in the face. I don't know, you guys never had, like, the dreams of something that happened, and after it happened, you're like, whoa, I had a dream, but you don't realize it until after it happens? I, I haven't I had mean, prophetic dreams yet, no. I, that's not my superpower. It's I like, have them more regularly than I care to admit, but it's always super mundane, boring stuff. Well, yeah, basically the same thing. Like, literally having an exact conversation with somebody while eating yep. a pizza or something, and then after, like, maybe, like, ten minutes after it happens, like, wait a second, that was my fucking dream. Like, I remember this down to the detail, like, to what was playing in the background and what the conversation was and how the pizza tasted. Like, like I, I got that. I totally understand that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you could use prophecy to well, dodge it, a punch. It, well, we're not... I mean, we're we're just saying hypothetically, even if you could, he wouldn't. That was on, that was the only point. We're saying that he sees these things and he sees them to fruition. That's all I'm saying. Right, right. He, the, con a story like the conversation that. started, say. and my brain went into superpowers breakdown, like the whole. Death oh yeah, thing. I totally get that. It's like, so this time know, on death battle, Wazikian versus <laughs> Jesus Christ uh, versus Wally West. Athena, would you like to take this next one? All right, go go gadget rectal punch says, "You nailed it right on the head. Not many people I've seen who react to this understand the horrible truth of Irinui's wish. Yes, she wanted to have kids. Yes, she wanted her pet back, and yes, she wanted everyone to be okay. 
Those three wishes combined into that hell you just saw. This show is batshit insane. And not agree more with that. And hey, an actual positive comment saying that we're smart. I love Go Go Gadget is now my favorite commenter. By your you wishes combined, combined, I'm your new home. <laughs> <laughs> there is another. Uh, and our last comment here then is by Ruslan Honcharenko. That's to a fun a clear, name. I know. To give a clear timeline, Bone Drew turns the Nachi and Midi into hollows. During the time that they were on uh, the base, Bone Drew grabs Midi on an expedition to the Sixth Layer. He can since uh, he. Oh. He can since he cloud consciousness and invented cartridges to avoid a curse. Okay, okay. Uh, he visits the village. Belafu uh, looks at Mini and wants to buy. Bone Druid reviews this to sell and leaves, while learning from Belof that she is immortal. Then Belof pays compensation with his body to the village, and he creates a Mini copy. Meanwhile, Bone Druid, back on the base, uh, starts experimenting with Mini. There she gets that signature messed up look with the squished eye. Nanashi then takes Mini and escapes. Uh, just to point out, Iremu uh, was saying their tribe on the surface imitate the residents of the Golden Silly, which are mysterious, disappeared somewhere, uh, and took their language and inking practices. So the tribe on the surface and the Golden City inhabitants may not necessarily relate to each other and be descendants and ancestors. Uh, they might be completely separate civilizations. Also, in the end of episode 6, Waco remembers Iru's words and wondered if Reg was tr a true resident of Layer 6. Uh, he does have a weird body and markings. So, that was a little bit uh, rough to say, but I think I get what's being said. Uh, given that it seems really difficult for anyone to leave the Abyss given the curse and there's no clear mechanism to bypass it in any way, the idea that the tribe on the surface is just some other civilization that looked at the rocks that ended up at the top and went, I like this culture, I'm going to emulate it, seems perfectly uh, above well, board, right? I mean, can hollows have kids? We haven't seen that yet, and I'm scared to know the answer now. <laughs> well, I mean, like... Well, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. How, how would you... Uh... Well, what was her name? The the one who had the kids. Sorry, my mind just blanked really hard. F Faputa? No, that's the Irimia. kid. Thank you, Irimui. Uh, would you consider her a hollow after the, the egg transformed her? Oh, absolutely. No. There we go. You got two different answers. Ah, okay. I'm not All right, well, I'm not because you being... both gave me a different answer, I feel the need to look it up. I'm not Should being I contrarian, because my thought is Irimu transformed due to the egg wish thing. And yeah. not due to the the layer web invisible thing that is the abyss. And so your argument is she's not a hollow, she's a flesh monstrosity. Understandable. She is something other. She would be a different <laughs> class. Look, scientific classifications exist for a reason, Griff. <laughs> she is a different thing, and there's many eggs out there, which means that other people or monsters or whatever could be transferred into this new classification of creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time... Oh, man, I mean... Bondrew well, see, I'm, I'm, I'm checking out the, uh, the page here, and it says her species is human formerly, and then does not give me a specification. Okay, so because so it doesn't I, specifically I the... say hollow, I'm just gonna say not. Yeah, I guess the wiki agrees here with Theta. She's not technically a hollow. She's not a human anymore, obviously. She is her own third mystery option. So, uh, I think that at least concludes our comments for right now. Wait, Coming wait, up um, next... oh, oh, you got follow, more. Follow through on that thought, actually. What is Faputa? Um, well, you know what? Let me go check that since I still have the page open. Because she's tagged her own new secret thing. <laughs> Narihate are hollows who have survived the six layers cursed, and their bodies have become deformed. So she's a special advanced hollow. Yeah, I was about to say, because she was never human. Yeah. Very true. So she's actually technically... The word Narihate comes from the term Narenohate, which means the shadow of one's former self. 
trivia. We've learned something today that this is getting weirder and weirder all the time, and new species can just happen. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, that would mean we have what humans, hollows, whatever you become whenever you come from something from an egg, <laughs> and then whatever the children of egg creatures are. Advanced <laughs> hollows. Yeah, which is weird. Because... I, I like advanced hollow. I think that is actually a great way to put it. Well, the wrong car. It's two the wrong classifications car of them, right? <laughs> well, my can well. Hey, that's a whole different bleach discussion here, but sorry, I my, just, my only confusion there is that typically a hollow is defined as formerly being human, and this advanced hollow was never human. We also see even amongst the people who turn into hollows, there are those who turn into like weird, mushy creatures that have less definition and nothing to them, and then there are some very highly human, very capable clearly advanced hollows amongst them like uh our soup kitchen hollow is clearly way more advanced than 90 percent of the people in the village right well we also don't know what kind of uh, deals they may have made in the god knows how long they've been down here because they could have been selling off their own body parts this whole time as well it, it is possible through the weird mechanism of the tree they could have also changed too but we we have like no track record of that. That's why. So well, <laughs> we don't have a track record, but we have um, proof that it's happened. <laughs> Namely, <laughs> the the one that sold off like their legs and organs for a copy of MIDI. That they've done right, it right. and can't do it. Okay, so things could have changed. So I guess you could still become advanced over time. And maybe regain that, some bit of humanity. I think there was also the conception of how Gas Guy works, is that he sold off all of his parts, but he won't die as long as he stays in the city. Mm -hmm. so Which, honestly, I... that's a really, like... Just as a concept, that's a really cool way to exist. Like, in actuality, <laughs> I can't imagine it's very fun, but from a from a, from the pers perspective of someone, like, witnessing it, that's kind of cool. It's kind of metal. I think he I mentioned sold off it. literally everything to get everything else he wants. I mentioned it before. It's, there's also a bad guy from. Uh, I always want to say Hellraiser. Every time I think of it. He has a stone fist. He's a devil. He's red. Hellboy? Hellboy, there we go. This is the second movie, Hellboy villain. Who's just gas and a. Sorry, he's not the villain. He's the good guy. He's the guy who takes over the team when Grandpa Dad dies. There you go. Hey, he's somebody's villain, right? Well, it's Everybody the, it's is the other going. guy. Well, it's because the bad guy team has a guy whose suit's full of sand. But this I is think Spider Man did that guy. Well, that's Sandman. But this is like an old. Oh, Nazi. this is Man of Sand. No, this is like an old <laughs> Nazi, but his he's immortal, but his suit is just full of sand. So you stab him. Oh, crusty him. old bastard! You stab him, and sand pours out of his suit. But the good guy is just a suit full of gas. So he wants to attack you, he just opens up the helmet, whoosh, gas flies out. Imagine these two having a fight, and they both just go, well, I guess we both are completely incapable of hurting each other, what do we do now? Well, it depends on the composition <laughs> of the gases. Scientific method, Griff! <laughs> God damn it! Silicate doesn't interact with a whole lot of stuff, alright? It depends on the covalent bonds between electrons. Just uh... superheat him and turn him into a glass sculpture, you're done. Uh, but speaking of ionic bonds, let's talk about the form the wish takes. <laughs> Last time, uh, in the present, Reg meets Faputa again and asks that she provides a body part to help buy Nanachi's freedom. Faputa tears off one of her arms and gives it to Reg, reminding him of his promise to help her destroy Iruburu and its inhabitants. Back in the past, Irumiyu's body continued to mutate, grow, and give birth, and Wazukian continued to take her babies and turn them into food. Vaika was shocked to find out Wazukian had given Irumiyu a second cradle desire to further take advantage of her. Eventually, Irumiyu relocated to a different area and began devouring other creatures to sustain herself. Belov felt guilty about eating Irmu's child and offered his body and soul as a sacrifice to Irmu and was turned into a hollow. Inspired by his transformation, the rest of the Ganja followed suit and Irmu's own body became the foundation of Iruburu. 
Meanwhile, Vanku tried to commit suicide, reasoning that Irmu's wish would no longer take effect if she dies. Wazakian stopped Vanku and imprisoned her inside of Irmu's head, where she relegated herself to taking care of the souls of Irmu's deceased children. Outside, the second cradle desire allowed Irmu to give birth to a perfect child, Faputa. In the present, Vaiko concludes her story, explaining that Faputa was born from Irmu's rage and despair at being exploited by the Ganja, and that she com uh, is completed by Irmu's wish to have the village destroyed. When Riku asks Vaiko what she wishes, Vaiko responds that she simply doesn't want to forget Irmu. So Last the, uh, the recap specifically says Fuputa is a she. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, always someone is writing something and might have their own opinions. I but, you said yeah, no, I multiple times, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I had to read it. So, I mean, I also just don't disagree either. Strong defense, Griff, strong defense. <laughs> Uh, this isn't a show where I need the evidence. I don't need them to hold out their pants and check. They don't wear please, pants. Please don't do that anymore, Abyss. We're, we're done with that. Please, no more. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're pretty done with Reg's bits. Everyone else is too. I'm pretty sure we're not. But is not. Again, I've read the interviews with the author. <laughs> I know it's in their head, so. Oh, gosh, no. Uh, I don't want to know it's in their head after seeing this show, honestly. I'm scared for that, that writer. Look, all so I we... know is I know who masturbates and who doesn't, so. So, we have all the information now. We know the backstory. We know all the grudges everybody has. Reg is coming in order to get midi number two and grab the Nachi bag so the Nachi can have a cuddle pet for the entire rest of the story. But meanwhile, Reg is now obligated to destroy the city, and Faputo wants it to happen. And I have no idea what's going to happen now. Rank's not obligated to. Well, he made a pinky promise. You can't break those. Look, just because somebody it's hands true. you their arm doesn't mean you agree. But you shook on it. Literally not connected to their body anymore. Ah, <laughs> uh, that hardly matters. But yeah, no, um... There's there could be like technical motivated emotional reason to go ahead and do it anyway in like a case of like well you know we we got to settle whatever's going on or maybe they move on to a new life or something uh it's complicated I don't I don't know how I would write that story I don't know where that would go but I also don't know what I would do if I don't destroy it well I mean we already had this argument in the last mm -hmm. episode all I remember was saying, I don't think Reg can destroy the Golden City. Good point as well. Uh, let's see. Shy, do you have any kind of, like, thoughts about what's going to happen here? Uh, not especially, but I do have a question for Theta. Uh, does Ozen fuck? You said you have all the nitty-gritty on that. I said I had, uh, the, the author's thoughts, the, uh, from interviews, and... Well, I mean, if you know who masturbates, I assume you know who fucks. Uh, the answer is Ozen does, for sure. Like, 100%. It I can't don't... be otherwise. I mean, I got no specifics, either. I don't remember every Ozen being mentioned. Because, remember, I, my my stuff comes from the movie, and Ozen's not in the movie. Mm -hmm. But oh, I also described to you the um, the manga panels where uh, Bondrude and Ozen are together. And she strips Bondrude naked and hangs him off of a cliff, so... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking back to any Ozen manga panels I may have, you know, real fast skimmed through to, to find that one, and I don't remember anything of that nature. Okay, just checking. Alright, so no, no canon answer to that one. Oh, I'm sure there is. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a manga reader... Of the, like, 5% that listen to this just before the thing airs, end of conversation part. That'd be like, oh yeah, no. If you look at the compilation, chapter 4, there's gonna be an Ozen doing something you really never wanted to see shit. If, if you die. have more funny trivia for us, go ahead and post that down in the comments, and we will laugh for hours at it. <laughs> 
So I think given all that, we are ready to get started. But before we get started, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can check it out over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but hey, no pressure. It's all to support this channel, just a little bit extra. So with that, let's go ahead and watch. Same。ノ、ファプト。本当の本当にその傷平気なのか。ハディ。ゆるっとアルコール Again, I mean, is she gonna like regenerate the arm or? I don't know. Fufuda's emotions are, are great here. It's like, oh, you're worried about me, gets happy, and it's like, no, pet me now. <laughs> the only good use for extendable arms, petting at a distance. <laughs> I really feel like we should have paid more attention when they taught us this language. Uh, I'm not sure any of that was uh, in the short scene where they describe a few words. <laughs> no, there was like a paper. Remember? Mm -hmm. And everything on it. Look, all I'm gonna say, I tried translating a language once in a game, and I'm not doing it again. I think I did most of the work in that if you're talking about the, the dwarf mountain. Yeah. I'll take the rest of my work. Aha, we've now slipped an arm inside, and that's what Fapuda needed in order to destroy the village. You've already sealed their fate, Reg. <laughs> Fapuda's got crazy eyes. <laughs> She just stand in there, menacingly. <laughs> She's gonna use the dark side. Now is that just about the whistle, or is that about Prushka specifically? <laughs> you know? Good question. Well, because... So she gonna... It was a big surprise when, like, what the fuck is Bone Group doing down here? And now, <laughs> now it's like, oh no, there's no possible way Prushka could have gotten down here before. Because there's no way Prushka could have gotten back up. Right, meanwhile, Bone Druid can just go ahead and say, ah, I'm gonna teleport my consciousness back up, it's fine. <laughs> he doesn't care. Yeah, because he's basically got an almost infinite supply of bodies. Yo. Because, despite what we may think, or most people, people come down here looking for Bone Drew just to, like, join up. <laughs> just to hang out. Well, I mean, he's like the mad genius that's always right, so... Look, I want to go with that guy. Him and Mayuri would have a field day. That'd be like a scene that happens, right? Riku just gets hefted into the pit and blows the whistle, hoping something happens. Oh no, they just infected you. You said Riku. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's the boy. I like the Cyclops. That one's cute. Look, we also saw her as a person before. That caught me before the, uh, 
the flashback of seeing everybody change? Mm -hmm. See, oh, the little blue-haired girl, and you see the ghost cyclops sitting behind her. Because that's what she is. I, I like the idea of Waco just, like, kind of going off her own and catching up with, like, a couple friends. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, I remember when you had blue hair. Oh, yeah, Beloff is kind of sensitive to all of this. Hey, remember how he got, like, really agonizingly guilt-driven after eating all the kids? Uh, here. Give another kid's arm over. Uh, you're right, Red can't do it, you're right, Theta. Oh, yeah, maybe she is immortal. Or, I mean, regenerates. And we're gonna get that reverse thing where she regenerates out of the arm. <laughs><笑><笑><笑> Oh, you just laser beam the problem. <laughs> so casually having this conversation in front of a bunch of people who might not want to die. Yeah. Well, it did fit her hair. You're so nonchalant about it, it's so unsettling. I'll be honest, this story was really hard to follow. I'm only in middle school, I had to take my nap around then, halfway through the story. So what happened after she turned into a tree? Ah, <laughs> Mr. Dawn. <笑>ミスター yeah, that tree's going nuts. <laughs> Everyone here eventually realizing that they really liked going deeper into the hole. So they all go on a journey together. <laughs> I don't think they can anymore. Yeah, you're actually a lot like Bonjrude a little bit. <laughs> あなたが目指した黄金郷がアビスにあるとしたら深海六層はまだ入り口途方もない探求を勝ちに持つあなたが入り口で終わりを選ぶはずがないあなたはどうして冒険を諦めたふりをしているのあなたは right, but I thought they couldn't leave the bearing, right? Right, but I thought they couldn't leave the bearing, right? That's what y'all have been saying. 
Well, no, I, thought I was set can't remember the detail either way. Yeah, that, I think that was set back when you were still with us. For those ep before the episodes that you missed. Hmm. Happy music, but I can only imagine the horrible shit's gonna happen if she does that. Rico! I now see how it's all coming together. It all makes sense. もう一度アビスに挑める。そういう夢はほほど見たけどよ。誰に背負わせるもんでもねえんじゃないの。麦ちゃん、そんなんじゃないさ。選ぶのは僕じゃない。この子たちだ。選べるのは挑むものたちだ
いいね迷ってる迷ってるそうねあいつは私由来で作られてる生産の影響は受けないじゃんお姫様の部品を奪った後も止まらない君たちを危険と断じて消化しようとしてる逃げてブエコ逃げ平気そんな大声出したの初めて見たよ発声練習だけはいっぱいできたものだが逃げろと言われても I guess you've had plenty of time in the pit to sing to all of your little babies <laughs> Gosh, feels like a Dark Souls boss now It's like, yeah, I'm just gonna hit the entire arena I hope you dodge roll <laughs> Ironically enough, it's kind of like that one tree, bo tree boss that I think was in Dark Souls 2? Maybe it was 3? Mm -hmm. One in that, like, courtyard that smashes the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was fun. Oh, way to lose, right? Oh, blow the whistle. Fuck, just blow the whistle. <laughs> the it's super powered when you blow the whistle. Yakutakunotomidana. <laughs> Wow. Reg actually understands taking a look at the backboard and making sure you don't hit anything else. Good boy. Man, that, that mood when Reg, this 12 year old robot, like, has better uh, firearm practice than most people. I mean, to be fair, when you have a giant laser like that, you don't really need to aim, you just need a general direction. To whom it may concern, dear grid coordinates. What if you blow the whistle? Will it wake him up? I haven't been done before. No idea. Yeah, that's that's pretty. I say she tries it. ここより遥かに危険だ。頼む。そりゃ頼まれてやるさ。けどうちら3人じゃ手に余るさね。かじゃ、人数集める。Hey village, your devil is here. <coughs> Menacing you again. Evil is here, and it is tiny and adorable. Oh, this is some theme music here. <clears throat> Woo! She's also got laser beams. Oh, that's just the robot. Never mind. <laughs> ユルサン兄弟ファプトうまそうに寝めまわしたお前たちの目を許さぬお前たちの口を母と同じ言葉を使い祈りを吐くその口を許さぬお前たちの姿を許さぬ我が身可愛さに母を冒涜し続けた
お前たちのその長らえ続けた命を許さぬお前たちの意志を許さぬ喜びも悲しみも営みも断じて継がせはしないチリアクタの一つに至るまでお前たちの存在を決して許さぬ全て忘れぬために生まれたこの日をこの時をどれほど待ちわびたか覚悟する間も許さぬ根絶やしにしてくれる Yo, that was a killer speech. Yeah, she's been practicing that one. She didn't even do her stutter or anything. Yeah, of, of course that wasn't going to do anything to her. Yeah, I thought so. I knew it was going to heal Ooh, healed up! Because that's basically Twice just as adorable. her mother's shit, so why don't we do We're all going to die, thank goodness! <laughs> okay, she's just gonna go to town, alright. <laughs> Shonen protagonist moment. Just jump into the crowd, mob, style, mob bit style. <laughs> Just psychically absorbing the plot. <laughs> oh, it's the dude. Yeah. I, mean, that's where I really like his time. design. As honestly, as far as the hollows go, that's like top tier for me. Like, yeah, I guess you weren't with us when we first met them. No, I wasn't. I did see them transform though. Yeah, yeah, but they got introduced a lot. A lot earlier than that. Yeah. Definitely my favorite design, though. That's why you haven't seen Nanachi this whole time. Wow, they, they, they ended it three different Nanachi times for us there. Themselves to them. That's why Nanachi's been in that room the whole time. That episode just had had a had a lot. That was, it, that was a lot. Was. Oh, that that was so good. It was a lot, but not in the gore horror way that it normally is. This, gonna be a bitch this was like emotionally impactful. I don't know. It was a lot of shonen with a real, with a real story kick at the end. It's definitely the most action we've seen in a minute, isn't it? <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, this the whole point of Maiden Abyss is like this slow burn of narrative that, and understanding. It's just pity. All that you gather. It's just just midi in a bag. You yeah, gathered Griff. all the midi. Yeah, Griff, I always say, hold on, so you'll be silent for that one moment so that I can keep it fully in. <laughs> <laughs> you understand like when you talk over the the action parts, you're making my editing job that much harder. That's what I was saying during the op the uh, credits before I even said <laughs> to myself. Not to talk over the midi, the reveal of next episode's name. Yeah, uh, but here we are in credit time. Because most of the most of the conversation was right over the action. It was like shit. 
what am I gonna do here? Well, at the very least, I think I got my answer to like the question I was coming into this, which is like, what'll they do and how will they progress the story with it? And the answer is, all right, they will destroy the village, but uh, some people are gonna go exploring again. Uh, I maybe doubt. not most of the crowd, apparently. <laughs> I doubt anyone's going exploring again. Well, you remember these people were like, I think awe is the best word. Uh, these people were awestruck by her birth. They're awestruck every time they see her outside. They're awestruck now, even when she's launching against their... I don't think they're going to They seem do happy about it. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do... No matter what sort of aspirations they may have confessed to here in the middle of the episode, at the end, I don't think they're going to defend themselves. They're just going to get slaughtered. No, like like they were they were looking with bright shiny eyes and smiles and and sounds of awe. Like I, I think they're just gonna let themselves get massacred. Yeah, <laughs> well, I I think they entirely understand everything they had to do to get here. They're just kind of okay with it. I guess they kind of saw this day coming, regardless of whatever prophecy Wazukian's been stating or whatever. They're just like, no, yeah, she's definitely gonna come and get revenge on us. And honestly, we kind of deserve it. Besides, she looks it's what, cool. It's what they said at the uh, last episode. The one dude wanted to die. He walked in. Just do to me what you will. Turned him into a centipede dragon thing. Uh, she so really is just that one meme. He was meme willing and just like... to die. He was willing to die. And it didn't kill him. And mm -hmm. they just know that the price is going to be paid at some point. And mm -hmm. now the princess is here to pay said price. Or to take said to collect on yeah. the payment. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I was stumbling, you caught me. I got you, though. I got you. So, a whole lot of things going on. I'm still not entirely clear how it will resolve, of course, you know? Everyone's there, dead. There's still a lot of wiggle room for a bunch of different things happening. Everyone's dead. They'll continue on lower into the pit. Well, yeah, I mentioned... think the main crew's gonna be fine. They, they didn't do anything wrong. They're just hanging out here. <laughs> I already mentioned there's gonna be an, there's another Maiden Abyss thing has already been announced. I don't know if it's going probably maybe I'm thinking it's probably gonna be a movie because there's not enough manga stuff released to make a whole season out of yet. And they did do a movie between these two seasons. I wouldn't be surprised if they kept that a trend. It would make sense. It would buy time for sure. Uh, but honestly, like, I was not expecting going to the season that we would have an entire season about just one layer, about just one location. Uh, that was definitely I mean, I not kind of exactly did, because expecting. the whole thing was called the Golden City of the Scorching Sun. It sounds like it was going to be in one location, like, by title. True, it gave me true, that implication fair. from the get-go. Dropping facts! I you mean, know, like, I, I don't know. I just feel like that's a weird opinion to have with a title like that. Mic like, drop, I don't know. Hold up. Let's, let's go back to the title real quick. One second. The Golden State. They've been talking about the Golden State the whole time. Where, where did the Scorching Sun come in? Has it happened? Is that gonna happen? The fact that the whole layer has, like, a, a brightest day like motif to it, too, as well. Like, I guess so. <laughs> I don't know. The whole thing is a big wasteland. Hmm. Well, it's also got those giant explosion areas, too. Of All magma, right. or whatever it was. So, what kind of final thoughts do we got here? I'm ready to see Faputa murk a whole village, and I feel like Rico's gonna stop it somehow by having a friendship speech or something, but I hope it doesn't happen. I, don't I know. hope they just get murked. We got the crazy eyes at Rico, so... Or at the whistle. Hard to tell. I'm imagining now Rico having the Gundam moment of, like, stepping up, throwing all wider arms, and just going, stop the fighting! <laughs> That's and what you I know think exactly is gonna happen. Because, like, I don't know, I feel like Faputa's not gonna try and kill Reg or Rico because they weren't necessarily involved. She, she likes so Reg, she tries she's to not get... gonna touch him yeah. at all. So I think if she gets in the middle of that, like... It, it, it might give them a moment, but I kind of hope that doesn't happen. I, I at the very least, want Wazukian to, to bite it, you know? At the very minimum. Here's the okay. thing, though, is that uh, I don't think this show ever gives you the satisfying resolution that you might hope for. 
It doesn't, but I'm just saying what I want. So <laughs> you think like, it would be satisfying if everyone died. What if they didn't, though? At the very minimum, if Wazukian died. If he dies, that's enough for me. If he doesn't, he's probably not going to. Bondru didn't get to die. Yeah, he'll say it was all part of the plan anyway. Why so. did Bondru do it was so horrible? <laughs> Everything <Yes>. else? <laughs> Listen, while he did it with the right intentions, he still did some fucked up shit. No, the intentions Listen were here. also pretty wrong. Listen though. here, Shy. <laughs> Bondru did nothing wrong. <laughs> oh, we got our Bondru apologies. You got, you got your right. one anime girl. No, you said wrong. that, and I stepped off. I know, you, I know. You've I chosen your <laughs> prince. We cannot assail him any further. So there's one more thought on my mind. Nanachi and Midi are just chilling up top. They, um, they can't leave. They straight vibing. Well, there's now a few big holes, and it's time to leave. No, so they, they cannot they, they... leave. They sold themselves, remember? To Belov. And Belov's getting out of there. No, Belov's... Belov is like the one person I would imagine is going to stay till their death. Uh, well, we'll see. He said it's time, the time for leaving as the episode ended. But, but, but. I mean, that's also what you might call the end of your life. Remember but... Belov last episode? I want to die. Just kill me if you want to kill me. But, 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 I'm focusing on the Nachi and Midi here. He says the time to awake has come. Okay. So, yeah, so we have the Nachi and Midi up there. They're just vibing. Starting um, now, it is no longer a dream. 100% Midi's just going to turn to dust again. Or something. M Midi's not going to turn to dust until uh, the city's dead. Because Midi is, well, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen either. Midi is a creation of the city, but we have no evidence that suggests that Midi, that you get snapped the moment the city dies, because it's still a thing that's been put it, together. It all depends on if the city itself is sustaining the things that it creates, or if they can exist independently once created. Right, we have yeah, no we gotta find one out. way or the other. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess maybe, maybe... I guess the only slight evidence you could think of was they're not able to leave that's the what village. I was, yeah, that's what I was about to yeah. say. And in that case... See, I got they, they you will. today! But there's a giant hole which is letting everything in that would... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard I don't to, know. But it's a little weird right until now. Until the whole mini situation is taken care of, or the city situation, Nanachi cannot leave. Because Nanachi sold themselves. So, there's Can we no... go to Midi City? Uh, we've been there. <laughs> It sits Midi City, join the town committee. It sits right below Bondrude's testing area, remember? That's Midi City. Yeah, I just wanted to rhyme. The Itty Bitty Midi City. I'm trying to think the of like a Paradise City uh, theme to it, but it's it's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> Take me down to the Midi City where the something something and the girls are horrible. <laughs> I don't know. Alright, so before I start doing terrible song lyrics here, this has been Stoneface Reactions, everyone. Thanks again for coming. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, that's Shy, and we will catch you next time. See you around, everyone. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?